Hi, welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John, let's keep you limp cool. I wanna show you how to integrate patches and work with patches in a song production that's also using an OMG Multi. I've made three libraries now of these really cool groove based take off and just uh right Let's speed this up how do we integrate this into a song with other synthesizers and in fact, we're not even gonna use this first to make it an even more complex Houdini to figure out, right? Uh, before we do that, before we get into all the fun production stuff, please come to my website if you need inspiring presets. The presets I'm gonna show, everything I'm showing today are library patches that I've created for plugins. Um, I really wanna get into more of this support and showing you how to use these libraries together. Um, they're pieces of clay. Each preset, I hear people talking all the time about how they never want to use presets. I have 30 years experience making presets. And so I have created presets in this molded form that you can take to anywhere. And you will take and find sounds and things that you are not going to create in a lot of cases on your own if you're just starting out. And if you, even if, I mean, I'm blessed to get to do this as a living. And so I've learned a lot of cool tricks the people that I work with that work and make libraries and patches at my site, they also know all sorts of cool tricks. So a lot of times you can study these. This is your school. <laughs> you can study the patches and go, oh, that's how I can do that. I can, I, I get that. And now you have that in your toolbox so you can use when you're making your own patches. Anyway, the idea is I want to build a song using Omnisphere and this OMG library and this groove. Right? But I want to start first with one of the other libraries I'm going to show. So I have Absinthe 5. This is a library that I have created for Absinthe 5 called the Power Pack. It's been out for a while and it's still to this day is one of my favorite, favorite libraries because it just has... Crazy, crazy cool patches. Right. Um, we're going to use a sound from Omnipulse, which is a library made of nothing but BPM patches, as well as we're going to use the power pack for the uh, Repro 1. Let's start here. So I'm just playing one note. And it's doing all this lovely, beautiful, lush stuff to it. So we're going to take a look at this because, we're again, I'm talking about how to use this in unique ways for yourself. So if you go to this sequencer, one of the cool things with Repro 1 that I love is you can hit record and you can just play. Okay, so I made 16 steps. So I just go play. Now let's do this. Let's take down the snappiness of this. So let's... this a little bit more complex let's add something like shimmer this is really cool let's turn off the purple little button so I can have both this and repro one open come here repro um. have noise I'm going to turn down. So let's start with that. Now before we get too far, one thing you got to remember with your mixer, if everything is at 0 dB it's going to overdrive and sound like crap. So right off the bat let's go over here and let's select all these guys and bring them down together like minus 6 dB. So we have a lot of headroom to work with. We can always compensate 
Since you're in a digital domain mixer, there's no noise and line noise like on an analog mixer. So you can bring it down super low and you're not introducing noise. You've got headroom to deal with, but that's something you can deal with later once you get everything mixed and you've got an idea of where you're heading. So let's record this. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn on latch. So I can play with it. And I can play with the effects. Because it's recording everything on this channel. Okay, so just, just an idea. Okay, so now if I, let's see here, I, I've got this like this. I want to go over here and quantize this to like eighth notes because I'm not playing busy parts. There. And if you watch, it will slowly, it remembered where we started with all the effects and settings. Changing things as I go. Now, Omnipulse is a library I did. I love this library. It has a couple patches in particular. I mean, there's a lot of really cool patches. But if we go here to Omnipulse, right here, these BPM guitars are super useful for all sorts of... Let's go to the Stratus, but instead of the Stratus, I'm gonna use the ping pong. So that's the way it, one note. And right now the mod wheel is doing that. The mod wheel has, let's see, it has, are these just high pass? Yeah, high pass filters. Okay, so we have high pass filters. So we get our juicy. Maybe I don't want it to do that much. So let's go here to show modulation. And let's bring it down to be like half that strength, both for layer A and for layer B. We say show and then bring down the strength because I don't want it to be so. That's cool. And I wanted to bring up this reverb because we're kind of going for a cool ambient vibe. And at the same time, I'm going to right click and say modulate by wheel the reverb time. So now. That's cool. So I've customized this just enough so that it's going to work kind of for where I think I need it to be. I can adjust it later. Um, so let's try that. So we go. Oh, got to remember your chord changes, right? So let's watch to see where we're at. And let's actually do this. This is where it's nice to have a sequencer so you can... I've got this set, so I don't need to see that anymore. What I need to see is this. I'm going to hit P to see piano player roll. So I can see that part while I'm sequencing this part. So I go like this, but then I click this. So now I can... There. And again, you're going to quantize later.
I'm going to go down to the F minor here. Okay, so that's my idea, basically. Okay, so we want to quantize that. Again, I'm not playing busy parts. I'm going to quantize the eighth notes. And then let's look at absinthe. And what do we want absinthe to do? I think we want to do some sort of like really cool. Let's go over here to the sounds. There's a couple really cool leads that hammer sound. Um, I think that'd be really cool. Mainly right here at this breakdown is. So we're gonna actually fast forward to that part. Get to this part here too. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Just for a little more tension at this part, this, right? Okay, so, a couple of things. One thing, I don't want it to change notes there. So, let's see, why is that note sustaining out like that? That note should not be sustaining out, so... There, and then we'll keep this note going. Okay. Um, and I'm going to quantize that. And I might have 16th. I don't think I did 16th notes, but just to be safe. All right, so we have a cool idea, right? Now we're ready for the drums. Notice I didn't record, but Logic has this cool thing it can capture after the fact. I played wrong anyhow, but you get the idea of where we're going with this, right? So let's do this. We want to be able to remix this in real time. So I'm going to go to each one of these and right click to say enable host automation for each of... Oh wait, not, not on this track, but on the uh, this Omnisphere part here. So I right click, if I haven't already, I've enabled host automation for these on this uh, Omnisphere um, so that I can record the animation, I can record automation, so I can record automation of the volume sliders if I want. Now, to make this work really well and reliably, I would suggest if you're gonna use this in a sequencer environment to turn off these trigger modes. You can find these on multi, live, and in Omnisphere 2.5, you come over here and you turn off the trigger immediate. The reason for this is because we have other things that are doing the clock. And sometimes it will start in time. I've had times where it won't. Now it will start when I play a note. I'm going to need to quantize it after the fact. The quantizing in my sequencer will fix it to be triggered perfectly, okay? But now I can play it anytime I want. So um, that just helps make sure I get it to work right. So what I'm gonna do is this. We're gonna turn on latch, and I wanna start, let's look at the list of what's playing. I don't want snare. Okay. So we have the energy hat. And I think on the kick drum, it's hidden that you can go over here. No, it's not hidden at all. So we wanna go over here and add a reverb and bring it to full mix because this is the auxiliary bus. I want the reverb to be able to be sent into the bus when I move up the mod wheel on it. So we're gonna say mod wheel. Okay, so I've got this set. So I have the modulation wheel doing this really big reverb. So now on the reverb, I'm gonna lower the low frequency 
and I'm gonna actually hit the more and go over here to high frequency, make that be longer time. Cool, okay, so let's try this. We've got this mix set, so we're gonna like, if I had a real-time controller set up, I'd be able to play those. I'm just gonna move the, the, the sliders right here like this, so with latch turned on. Okay, so once again, if I play this and the timing is off, just know when I quantize it's gonna fix it, okay? So here we go. You got the guitar part in. I'm off right there, but it's okay. I'll fix it. <laughs> Let's see how that sounds after we quantize it to be probably eighth notes, okay? Move the monorail up for the reverb. Now there's a couple things in automation I wanna fix as this goes along. So I'm gonna hit the A button to turn on automation inside of Logic. And I'm gonna go just to a region basis, I believe, because I wanna go to the volume. Maybe it is on the track. Yeah, here we go. So part three was the snare. When it came in, you see how it jumped up? I don't want it to be that loud. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring this down and shorten it. Actually, I can just take this last event and move to the left and it will erase everything before it as I move it to the left. So there we go. That's all in time because I quantized when it starts the triggers, right? And I have four parts playing and look at my outputs. I'm not overdriving. Hear the automation of the shimmer verb, which is cool in there. Okay, so I've taken the parts, I've made my own art pattern. Let's review what we've done. And we can put these all, let's go to the, hit the X button so we see the mixer and just make sure everything that's latched is set to read. And it's important to do that so that when I go back and play this, if I'm tweaking, I'm not recording that automation in um, as I'm tweaking because I might be like fixing, like bringing up the EQ on a part or bringing down the level. And if latch is still turned on, it's going to turn down the volume at that point because it's, it's thinking you're still recording. Latch is cool, but you got to make sure that when you're done recording automation, set it back to read. Okay. I loaded up an RP1 patch, Saving Spirits Plucky. I modified the settings and then I went to the sequencer section and I set it to record. And I had this set to sequencer so I could see and make sure that I recorded in 16 events that equaled a. 
right? I added a shimmer, shimmer, here's without. And maybe I would turn down drench. I could turn down the, the, if I wanted to have it more clean, I could turn down the delay and the reverb. I could turn them off this way as well, where I turn off a uh, lyre bird and I turn off drench here. Now if we turn on shimmer verb, it's a little bit cleaner because there's no effects coming from Repro 1 before it gets to the Valhalla shimmer verb. So your choice, you can modify that. But I made a sequence. Uh, we went to Omnipulse and for there, this is one of the fun things that's kind of cool is like, so when we play this, we can listen to this. I could change the pattern around. Octaves. Maybe a fifth. I've made it more complex. Maybe you want to do that, maybe you don't. But you can, it's easy to do. Then if I wanted to take this even further, I could go to contact. I could, because a lot of, th what I typically do is, if I have something like this, it's doing a repetitive drum groove kind of thing, I want to add some realness to it. So there's a couple ways to do that. There's a way where you would use something like, um, let's use a hip hop kit from Super Macho Drums and a, Maybe turn it down. Maybe I would get into some creative sound design things since it's kind of an ethereal thing. So let's turn off the browser. We don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. We can shrink this. This is what's nice with Super Macho Drums. It's a clean interface and you can change everything without going to multiple pages and all that stuff. So I'm gonna take this and if I'm on drum mode, I can just change this symbol to be a high pass filter and all the other drums are normal. So I'm gonna bring up resonance, because I want this to sweep, like that. So what you do to do that is bring the filter where you want it to end up. And then I'm gonna to go to the filter EG, and then slow it down, and bring up the release to be long so that it doesn't just back down to zero when you take your hand off the key. Maybe I want to bring up a little delay. Yeah. So let's try that. little human rhythm stuff. Add some shakers.
Now the volume was soft, but I still, I was, I was hearing what I was doing and I was liking it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to quantize it to eighth notes, but I'm going to go to where the groove starts right here. And I'm going to hit command T, which will split it. And then and for here, I'm going to go to like a slightly more swingy 16th note. And I need to go to automation for the volume. I want it to go from here. Let's have it slowly come up. Let's zoom in a little bit. It's like that. And I think I'm going to just stick something kind of crazy. Like Universal Audio has this really great DBX160 emulator that's just... So, here's from the beginning. Nice cool crash cymbal effect. Those little things just make it so it's not just a sequence repeated over and over again for the entire song. That drives me nuts. So. All right, so. Hopefully this gives you some food for thought. It's all about food for thought and inspiration. That's what I'm about. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video, okay?